Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mindset is Everything podcast. Today, I have a fantastic guest who's going to tell us about her true transformation. Barbara, hello. Nice to have you here. Hello, Mikhail. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Well, it's a uh, listen, guys, it's interesting conversation because it's about something that it's, in my opinion, very important and dear to my heart art creation we can say generally and barbara is artist and art teacher so barbara can you please tell us a little bit about yourself about what you do professionally well i found that uh, there were people looking for a creative outlet to reduce the stress in their life so as an art teacher and a wellness practitioner i bring together art and wellness together into my classes so that uh, the people can have a place and space to reclaim their joy as well as to express their creativity. So and that's fantastic connection. Yes. Yeah. Because I truly believe art heals and, you know, more art, less stress. <laughs> I definitely agree with, uh, with this statement. Yes, art can heal. And listen, listen, guys, it's it's the matter of our mind. Uh, I just taught this today on one of my trainings. Our brain works in two stages. It can whether create or fight for survival. And art is simply a training for creators. So if we create by art classes, we learn how to create in everyday's life and that's why art can heal because it teaches you a skills that can be transferred for well technically any area of your life and that's that's fantastic thing that's something great that you are doing and uh, i'm really glad i i met you well among thousands uh, or hundreds of thousands of people on uh, on linkedin because that's how we met but barbara yes, it, yes go on no it was wonderful to to meet you and uh, i mean to hear that you have this connection with art and that you really believe in the arts that just you know that makes my heart sing <laughs> fantastic and that's something that i actually recommend uh, to my clients, just be creative, do something art related, go for some art classes, uh, do something that will is going to just take you away from everything else. Mm. But it's not the only one thing that takes us away from everything else. Uh, because listen, guys, Barbara is a person who walks her talk, basically, she knows that the art heals because she needed those healing as well. Uh, Barbara, would you like to share what happened to you throughout the whole certain period of time and uh, how many those difficult experiences you went through in your life? Well, it was um, in about a five-year span that uh, some really heavy things happened in my life. And uh, I mean, I know a lot of people go through a lot of stress in their life, but uh, mine was particular to me. Um, first of all, I realized that I was a workaholic. Um, being an art teacher in the public school system, um, I just dove in head first into my work and basically it was weekends, it was holidays. Um, I just worked all the time just because I was trying to promote the arts to, to show in a rural community that it had some value um, because I had to fight for, my, for the dollars that I got into my classroom. So well, yes. yeah, so I did that and I kind of realized, I, you know what, I'm a workaholic. I, I have a problem here, you know, I, I can't take time off, even though I've won awards with my teaching, it still was, I just had to keep working. 
And then what happened is um, I was in a lot of pain and I went to the doctor and they found a growth on my spine. Um, basically the growth was from my L5 and coming out of my spinal cord and the growth would rub against the raw nerve and caused extreme pain. Like I've never experienced pain like this before in my life. And it would, uh, it would stop me in my tracks. I couldn't get comfortable lying down, sitting, any type of movement. Um, it, you know, and I was doing physiotherapy, but that wasn't helping at all. I mean, I tried everything. So finally they said, okay, let's have surgery. And he said to me, I'm not concerned that you'll be paralyzed after the surgery. I'm concerned that you might die because it was so close to the artery. And, but I was in so much pain. It didn't take me any time at all to go, I'm going for the surgery. I, I just wanted relief. And if I yes. had to have relief by an accident, then so be it. But it all worked out. I was able to, um, you know, get the growth removed. And I was very happy about that. But through the recovery, I found that I just wasn't feeling well and wasn't feeling right. And lo and behold, a year later, they found that um, the growth had returned and it was larger. And the surgeons were like, they they lifted it, basically lifted their hands and said, you know what, we don't know what to do. So basically what I've been doing is I've been medic being medicated for it. So all that was happening. And then my mom, who is just the light of my life that I loved incredibly, and we had a really good, good relationship. She developed Alzheimer's and came to a point where she was no longer herself anymore. And, uh, just the shell of a woman, the vibrant woman that she was. Um, but then she died and I was just mortified. Um, I was just, I knew she was not well and I was preparing myself for her death. But when her death came, it really took the wind out of my sails. Mm. No, and it, then it's a year something that we can never be prepared for. Exactly. Yeah. And then a year later, after that, I found out I had cancer. And basically, I'd had enough. I was like, you know, with working hard all these years with the growth on my spine with my mom dying, then me getting cancer, I was like, enough, enough. So I fell into a severe depression and actually was suicidal. And um, just had no way kind of out of the situation. Um, but then what happened is then I had uh, ECT treatments and that seemed to help. But then that came with some side effects where loss of memory, um, all sorts of things like, you know, that I never really, you know, I knew at the beginning, but I didn't know the ramifications of it at the end. And then after that, all this, um, my dad, who I'm close to as well, he passed away. So it was all this incredible traumatic events on hitting me emotionally, hitting me physically, hitting me mentally. Um, it was just terrible. Like the, the depression was quite, quite severe. So, um, yeah, so that's basically what happened in a five year span of my life so and uh, that's guys i need to say it's uh, well hearing this and realizing how tough it was it's one thing but leaving it waking up with the pain every day going to bed with the pain every day it is tough journey and uh, well i wouldn't wish it to my worst enemy because I know how it can well destroy everyone, doesn't matter how strong you are. So imagine what Barbara went through within five only five years. Uh, so well with all those difficulties, 
tell me barbara what actually get you going so to speak what kept you alive what made you to see that there is a light somewhere there you just need to work towards this what was it well i was very fortunate to have a very strong support system first of all um that came with my partner that came with my uh, family around me that came with friends and uh also doctors um so having that support system really made a difference to me uh so you know that was one of the cl clues uh, that helped me along the way another one was basically i really cut back but not out because a lot of times when you have depression you want to just completely just tap out yes this what i what i did here was i said no i'm going to be still part of life but I'm going to be aware of listening to my body, um, getting enough rest at night, exercising myself. Um, and then I had this thing where I would act as if. So act as if you were a happy person. So what would a happy person do? Well, a happy person would exercise. A happy person would eat healthily. A happy person would get together with her friends. So that type of thing really helped me. So acting as if I was healthy. And then another one was basically just the courage to live a new life, just to, so self-nurturance. I uh, had Reiki. I went for massages. I basically one thing that really made a difference was I found beauty in the ordinary so looking around I took my camera and I not my camera my iPhone and I went around and I started taking pictures just to find the yes. beauty that was around me and that just switched a little light bulb in my head as well that made everything a little bit more well there's beauty around me there's beauty in my life I'm very fortunate and then last but not least, art. Art helped me. Um, I had a journal where I basically put all my time and my emotions into this journal. Uh, I created in my journal. I wrote in my journal. Um, you know, just, just putting myself out there into the pages. And then by doing that, I was able to communicate to the doctor, to the therapist, the help that I needed because I didn't know how to articulate it at first but what helped me was the art by doing that that was the first step for me that I could figure out okay how am I feeling um, what am I feeling and then to go on from there and express it so yeah so those Fantastic. are those are my steps <laughs> well so technically you were doing everything that I always recommend people who are going through depression and uh, who come to me with uh, suicidal thoughts. And yes, that's that's absolutely perfect. And what you said first and foremost is the support group. That's very important part of that uh, because, uh, well, we need someone to talk to. We need crowd, we need people around us, we need this connection and love. And uh, without this, it's technically impossible. And uh, well, I, I often ask, I usually ask uh, if I don't know uh, when someone comes to me, do you have someone to talk to other mm -hmm. than me as the stress management coach? And you know what? People usually don't. Because no. they keep everyone around happy and make them think that everything is okay if it's not. But it's okay not to be okay. That's very important message in here. And as you can see here, guys, Barbara did exactly that. She talked to people. She had a support group. She opened up to friends, to family, to doctors. And then the therapist that she's been working with and what's very important as well, she opened up to herself. Is that right? Yes, completely. I basically stopped fighting, stopped pretending that 
um, in some ways I was okay, that I needed help, that I needed mm -hmm. to bring people into my life because I couldn't handle it by myself. And there, there was no shame in saying that you can't handle it by yourself. I, I mean, I really believe we're, we're created in these little tribes of people, like uh, such as our family, such as our friends, um, that, yes. that, that they're there to help us. Exactly. So. That's exactly what it is, guys. And just look around where, where you're sitting now, uh, in your room, in your car, in your office, wherever you are right now. Look around. Everything, every single thing that you see around you was made by someone else. We need one another in many ways. So talk to someone. But I wanted to stress something in here. What's very important as well. Make sure that you can see, you can spot the person within your closest friends, your family, that doesn't talk about him, himself or herself. Because if they don't, that means that probably something is going on. They might need help as well, but they just don't have the courage to talk to someone. So you can go there and talk to them and ask simply, how are you? And when they say how great it is, you can just stop and say, no, listen, I know the story. I know life is great, but really, how are you deep inside in your heart? Because I can see that there is something wrong and there is part of you that it's missing, that it's not here with us. How are you? And make them talk. Uh, because, uh, well, without uh, exaggerating, I can say that it's something that can save lives. Oh, I not, agree. Yeah. Yes, not not just life of this person, but life of the family, because it might be a father of the family, mother of the family. It can save many lives and make them different, make them better. So bear that in mind. And uh, yes, act upon it. So, well, we know that Barbara went through a lot. We know what she did, what happened. And uh, well, saying that, what are you doing now, actually? I did introduce you as an artist and art teacher, but tell us a bit more about what are you doing now professionally? Professionally now, I am uh, teaching art online. Um, I've taken I'm I'm I am a teacher <laughs> through and through so it only became a logical choice that I would teach online and I love it I just think it's just an incredible opportunity to um, touch people and to meet people throughout the world and to come across them and and uh, just have that experience with one another that I can share this with uh, them and I mean we have um, weekly talks every, every every week I get together they can ask me questions and stuff like that about their art and uh, yeah so it's just I just think it's amazing and I, I mean I, I just love teaching art and it's I mean, I had to learn a lot of new things because it's not necessarily I had to learn lighting and audio and yeah. <laughs> filming and all that. But uh, but that made it really a uh, good challenge for me. And I was up for it. So, yeah, it fantastic. Was good. That's great. So if you well, if you're doing all that, if you uh, not just walk your talk, but you're passing it uh, to to others uh, where people can find you, where they can search for you online then? Well, um, I go by Barbara Lynn Burns uh, because there's other Barbara Burnses out there. <laughs> and <laughs> I want to make myself a little different. So I'm Barbara Lynn Burns. And uh, my web page is www.barbaralynnburns.com. Um, LinkedIn, yeah, well, I'm Barbara Lynn Burns. Um, Instagram, Barbara Lynn Burns Facebook guess what <laughs> Barbara Lynn Burns <laughs> <laughs> but Twitter Twitter I'm just Barbara Burns so okay. there you go well guys what I'm going to do simply the most important thing is Barbara's website that's the best way to get in touch with her 
and I'm definitely going to include the link to, to her website in description, uh, as well as link to her LinkedIn profile. And uh, well, I usually have uh, by the end of this uh, conversation, this podcast, I have uh, one question to my guests and uh, I have uh, one question to Barbara as well. So the first one question is, <laughs> it's a one piece of advice that you would give to to a person who wants to be an artist who just uh, has this calling and doesn't know where to start what would you recommend to this person to do i would recommend them to just keep drawing and keep painting and um you know they could go the route that i went which is through you know higher education but in some ways you don't have to, if you develop your own style and your own way of doing it, I mean, you, you could teach online. The world is really open to what you could do. There's graphic artists, there's illustrators, just it, it's endless. Perfect. So. Just doing it. Yeah. And uh, well, because it is podcast, uh, well, that it's, closely related to mental health and uh, it's called mindset is everything mm -hmm. uh, well i have the the second one question <laughs> the second one question is what would you recommend to someone who's going through a difficult period in life and wants to use art to get better well i would recommend really again similar to the other answer i gave just spend time in your art really take your heart really listen to your heart and listen to your mind and put down whatever's inside there onto the paper it doesn't have to be beautiful in fact if it's ugly the better but the whole idea is for you to take whatever you're feeling inside and putting it down on paper that is the key because like i said then you can be able to express yourself verbally um and that's what happened with me so i think that could happen with others as well fantastic people remember art heals barbara is the living proof of that i'm a true believer and uh, well actually i've seen it many times in my life and uh, yes, you know, the golden advice, express yourself through art, whether you are in, well, tough place or whether you are feeling amazing and, and just hear the calling, uh, create and you will be happy. Is that a good summary of this conversation, Barbara? I think that's an excellent summary of, the, of this, you know, because art truly does heal and uh, it does take the stress away, so... Fantastic. Yeah. In that case, Barbara, thank you very much for being my special guest today. It's a great pleasure to have you and hear your story and share your story. Thank you for all the golden thoughts and uh, examples that you gave to us. And guys, we'll definitely get in touch with Barbara. Links are in the description. And uh, yes, create. Yep, create. So thank you again, Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.